there's been a lot of attention on Maui and what's going on there in terms of the outbreaks. Can you give us an update? What's concerning citizens on the ground? Well, so for Hana, you know, that's why we asked the national, um, we sent a letter asking the to the governor, asking for the National Guard to come out and uh, block the Hana Highway on the front side and the Pi'ilani Highway on the back side to allow only residents in. So we've had community testing. More than a third of our community went through the testing. Uh, no positives, everybody was negative. Um, and so now the thing is to keep people from coming here and then also keep our people from going out. So the isolation of Hana, already a very remote and isolated area is working. Um, the two stores, Hasegawa General Store, Hana Store, and Hana Pit Stop, the gas station, have all gone to basically a call-in or carry-out. So you don't go in the store anymore. They wear masks, gloves. Uh, they go in and get your order, bring it out. You call it in. They have it ready. Or if you drive up, they'll go in and get it and come out. So we've taken some really drastic uh, moves to keep our community safe. But the community is... is cooperating and doing very well with it. And I think that's why we have no known or reported cases in HANA. The testing on Molokai, all of the tests. So let me back up to HANA. HANA, we've had um, altogether about 650 plus tests of the people. Um, the first round, we had 430 tests and there were about a thousand people waiting. So we turned away about the same amount that we tested. Tested 430, turned away about 500. The second round of testing, we tested 200 people. Um, all of them are negative. And then on Molokai, we tested about 600 people altogether, the two rounds, and all of them were negative too. So, and then Lanai, no reported cases on Lanai. And um, they have been very adamant about keeping everybody off of the island. And both myself and Representative Decoy, Lynn Decoy, who represents Lanai as well, have worked hard to keep the island isolated and keeping everyone off. So they will be doing community testing uh, come this Saturday. Uh, and uh, that would help us to, to get a sampling of what's happening on the island. So right now we have no known cases, no reported cases. There are three medical, medical establishments on Lanai. Um, Lanai Community Health Center, which is a federally qualified health center, Straub, and Maui Memorial has a branch there as well. How much testing has been done so far? I know you will have these events coming up, but has it been kind of widely tested, the people there? On Lanai? So Lanai, uh, the three providers are working very closely together. Um, they have already tested the, let's see, they've already tested the, what they call the, the surveillance population, right? So their strategy is um, those in higher risk, such as, healthcare workers, emergency, um, emergency workers, police, ambulance drivers, also the people that work at the markets on, on Lanai, that work in the um, gas station, that have contact with a lot of people. So they have all been tested from what I understand. Those that haven't been will be tested uh, coming up this weekend. Um, also, because, okay, Lanai is still the old plantation town, right? So, it's the layout of Lanai City is based after New York City, it's grids. And the houses are very, very close together. So because those houses are very close together, um, the doctors are worried about um, cluster transmission, right? So, you know, they're, they're trying to find if someone does test positive, they're talking to Kulama Lanai, the owner of the island, to see if they can use one of their homes uh, to isolate someone if there are tests, if they do test positive, because the families are so close and they're large. Um, so the doctors are thinking, the medical infrastructure there is really thinking this through. Well, that's important to note because again, when we're talking about community spread, it's about keeping people out. And I know that was a big push by that community not to let outsiders in. Um, and I talked to General Hara also recently about kind of all the visitors coming in. Has it been difficult to, pre to, re to prevent or track all of these visitors coming in and not following quarantine? Well, so, you know, let me put it this way. The visitors, yes, um, but our own people, you know. So, for example, coming into Hana, I have lots and lots of local people that want to come here to go fishing, to go hunting, to go visit family. I've heard everything. You know, I'm coming into 
I had uh, someone send me something uh, on Instagram, which, you know, isn't, you don't know who it is, right? The name and said, I'm taking food to my mother. I, can you send me a, a resident access pass? So I said, um, tell me who your mother is and we'll take her food. And we never heard back, right? So uh, we're trying to tell people that you must stay home right now. And it's not about, um, you know, we don't want you to go do these things. But what we're saying is right now, we need to at least have a two week or a period or a one month period of no virus and then no one moving. Because that, that's what eventually kills the thing, right? The virus moves with people. And if people stop moving, then the virus stops moving. So it's been hard. Uh, I know that there was, uh, you know, the, the two tourists that were arrested on Lanai. They went to Oahu, Kauai, and then Maui. The hotels, I really have to thank the hotels for being so diligent. The front, front office people, the people that are working there, you know, they see somebody walking out. They're calling HTA and say, this couple just walked out of the lobby. And HTA then calls the police or National Guard to go and track them. So, but some slipped through. I don't know how this couple got to, from Oahu to Kauai and then to Lanai, but I'm certainly got, glad that they were arrested and I hope they're prosecuted because, you know, they have endangered everybody that they came in contact with along the way. Are you confident in what the state is doing so far to address the concerns of residents? Well, yes. I mean, you know, this is the first instance for us as a, as a state and as a government in modern times to deal with uh, this type of pandemic. And so I think, uh, you know, the response has been uh, phenomenal, considering that the legislature had to suspend it. Uh, we had to recess on March 17th abruptly. Um, many departments had to abruptly change and refocus. Um, so, you know, given the circumstances, I think the state response has, has been very, very good. I also think that the mayors have been uh, phenomenal in how they have been reacting. You know, Mayor Kawakami on Kauai, uh, my hat's off to him because he has done an outstanding job of taking care of Kauai and Niihau. Nobody's talking about Niihau because, about but, you know, they are, they are isolated and they want to stay isolated. And the mayor has honored that, right? He said, great. You guys take care of yourself. If you need anything, let us know. Um, so he's been really good. Mayor Victorino, Mike Victorino on Maui, his unique challenge is he has three inhabited islands and he has to deal with these three islands and what they want. And then Hana is like a separate island as well. So we have to, you know, make sure that what's happening on the ground coincides with uh, what the, the county government is doing. Um, Oahu, it's almost a million people. You know, it's a very different story. So the flexibility for the mayors to act is very important as well. Well, let's talk about Mayor Victorino because he's talked about reopening uh, the economy soon. Uh, what do you I, think, I think about that? Well, you know, for me, my, my view is that health, um, health over profits anytime, right? We gotta make sure that everybody's healthy and that the situation is healthy. Let's take a lesson from history. The 1918 pandemic, the flu pandemic, there were three spikes. The first one was the initial um, influenza that went around the world. That caused a spike up and then it leveled off where we're about now and then it started to decrease. It decreased, people let up, they reopened the economy. That wasn't the term they used 102 years ago, but they started doing things, they opened up. The largest spike happened right after that. People let their guard down, they started open and it spiked straight up three times as much as the initial um, infection and more, that was where the bulk of the people died was in that second spike where they thought everything was getting better and they started opening up. So, you know, I think we have to take the lesson from history and understand that, yes, it's getting better, but we have to stay the course and we cannot open up right now. We have to stay shut down. We have to let the virus um, die out, as they say. And that means no movement for at least two weeks for me, I would feel happy that when we had uh, zero cases reported for 14 days, and then we wait another 14 days after that. But here's the thing. We are still isolated. And just as we are, um, we can, because of the flights not coming in and, not, and the tourists not coming in, and you know, instead of 30,000 people a day, we have less than 100 people a day now, um, true visitors, right? We have people coming and returning, et cetera. Um, 
But the minute we open up, we are, it'll be impossible to do the tracing and impossible then to stop the virus from coming back in. So I think it's way too soon. And I think that, you know, I would prefer that we um, err on the side of caution. We can always rebuild an economy, but we cannot um, bring somebody back. Mm -hmm. uh, true, but again, the people that are wanting- Well, there isn't a but. See, that's the thing. I value human life, and there is not a but in this equation for me. Because what you just said is but. That means there's a, there's a certain place where the human life is not worth, it's, you're willing to sacrifice that for the money. I'm not. So I want us to be very clear that we will reopen this economy when it's safe for people to operate, right? We can rebuild the economy. The, perspective, the reason why I say but is because from the perspective of some of the people that want it open, you know, you yeah. protest, right? And people that say they're, they're suffering and not their, their jobs are at risk and unemployment's not helping them. You know, you hear this. Mm -hmm. So and, what and, is for them? Well, you know, I'd rather them be alive and upset and protesting than uh, dead and not making money, you know. So that's the choice. It's either you want to be alive and you want to be safe uh, and not get the virus. Go out and protest. I mean, you know, just look at the numbers across the United States. All of those church pastors that said, you know, let's have church, even though they were told this, is the, the, this would be very dangerous. A lot, of, a lot of those pastors have passed. A lot of them have gotten sick and a lot of their congregations have gotten sick. A lot of these meetings that have come together, you know, there were parties in Florida of the young, the 20 somethings that said, you know, oh, we don't, you know, we don't have, we're not going to get this. And what happened? A lot of them got sick. So also looking at the science, you know, we're seeing that this um, virus is, is mutating very, very quickly and it's starting to affect different parts. It's not sim simply an, a respiratory uh, failure anymore. It's going to liver, it's going to heart, it's going to uh, different parts of your body and causing all different sorts of things. You know, if you look at the Surfrider Foundation, for example, they recently put out um, a, a warning to their, their constituents saying, do not go to the beach. And they're citing studies that the sweat off of your body is now turning into basically steam and it atomizes this. So the six feet distance now becomes 25, 30 feet because it's aerosol and it's putting it into the air. So there's a computer model of somebody jogging down the beach with a trail behind them, right? And anybody behind them is getting all of that. If they're infected, they'll infect everybody on the beach. So if you go to the beach, please wear a mask, you know, because that's, I mean, that's one of the more uh, dangerous areas right now. And this is from studies that I've been looking at from Easier uh, to so, because if you go see it, people. I, I've been to the beaches here, and no one's wearing masks. Are you? Are right. you finding that people are doing that? I know no, it's mandatory what, here on Oahu. So. It's mandatory everywhere, and that's right, and, statewide. Yes, and that's why I'm saying this. That you know, I'm I'm asking people to please wear a mask when they go to the beach. The studies that I've seen are some are out of Europe, some are out of the U.S. Um, but really, the Surfrider Foundation study basically nails it, which says. You know, we, we'd rather be cautious. We, we see this thing atomizing. That means it's not the big water droplets. It's minuscule water droplets that travel a lot farther. So if you're on the beach, you want to go to the beach. And remember, you can't stay on the beach now. You can't lay on the beach. Um, if you're going to exercise or going fishing or going in the water, uh, you know, please wear a mask. I mean, if you're diving, you can't wear a mask, but you're wearing goggles, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so I just think, are, are you know, people listening though, you think, well, um, are some are, some are, you know, and that's the thing, right? It's their own risk that they're taking, um, by not, by not doing this, you know, I, I, I want people to be able to enjoy, but after, after this pandemic passes, how much longer you think based on, I know we have talking, we're extending to May 31st, at least in Oahu. I haven't heard anything from the governor yet about extending to May 31st? I'm not sure, but I think that's a safe bet that you know we should extend statewide to May 31st um, uh, just to see, because right now the current projections for us showing that I've seen show Hawaii reaching its peak um, at about the first week of May, right? So that coincides with the science that I'm seeing and the projections that are coming out um, everywhere that's saying for Hawaii, the peak is 
about the first week of May. They're also now getting down to different counties and different census tracts. So I'm looking at that types of data as well. Are you finding that the testing is appropriate? Do you think we should be asymptomatic testing? Yes, I do. Um, I think that asymptomatic testing is good. And the warning that I'm giving people is that the test is simply a point in time, right? So for instance, Hana, uh, we came out, you know, no negatives, everybody, I'm sorry, no positives. Everybody was, you know, not positive at that moment in time. And that was a week, two weeks ago and a week ago, which is very good, but it doesn't mean you let your guard down. It doesn't mean that, you know, okay, I'm, I'm negative, I can go, go back to Costco or go, you know, go visit grandma. No, it, it just showed us a picture in that point of time. So, because we don't know, right? Let's, let's be cautious. Mm -hmm. But right now, as you know, the state isn't doing asymptomatic, it's symptomatic. So even when you do those tests in Lanai, if a lot of them don't have symptoms, are they going to be able to get this test? Probably not. And then how will we have an accurate picture of what- Well, like I said, Lanai is very different, right? Lanai is very different because they isolated very early. They have a very good medical infrastructure there. Uh, you know, they're about 3,100 people there. They've already tested uh, about 120 of those people. And, you know, they plan to do um, this weekend, those that, that make the appointments and come in. And then they also have tests available there for others. So, uh, like I said, they're watching for what they're doing, what's called surveillance of the higher risk populations, which were the ones that I enumerated earlier, right? The health workers, police, market, workers, store workers, etc. cetera. Um, but because of their isolation, right, that they, they're a different case. On Oahu or Maui or Kauai, um, lots of tourists passing through, lots of tourists mixed in. On Lanai, the tourists go to one resort at the ocean, one resort in the mountain, and then there's Lanai City in the middle. So a lot of the tourists don't even make it to the city. Except for those ones that you mentioned. <laughs> they found their way. Yeah. Well, they, I don't know where they, right, how they did this, right? I mean, it still baffles me how they were able to do that. Uh, yeah, me, me too. I, and I think that's why a lot of residents are frustrated, uh, you know, that it's not doing enough. Perhaps there's not enough enforcement, but like you said, in certain pockets, it seems yeah. to be okay. Yeah. But anyway, thank you so much for joining us and telling us about what's happening on the ground where you're at. Um, you know, we often uh, don't get to talk about Lanai, but it, they are this positive um, example for everyone. right? You know, so what I can say is that my, my district is, you know, uh, the positive example throughout the state because we have, we've had uh, two cases on Molokai and those were dealt with very quickly. We had one case in Hana um, that was from someone traveling and then, you know, uh, they went to the other side to, to stay with their daughter. And I understand that there's been uh, two others that similar situation, right? So they ended up, hang on, there's something trying to tell me to do something there. Um, <laughs> you know, they ended up going to the other side of the island to, to quarantine, um, which means, you know, that it's worked, right? The isolation has worked within the remote districts, but we had to take very swift and immediate action. Hana Highway is the only uh, state road in Hawaii that was closed, right? And we did that very early. I asked the governor to please close the Hana Highway and the mayor to please close the Pilani Highway on the backside. Um, and they did together. Uh, and I think that's one of the factors that really stopped the spread immediately in Hana. Thank you so much, Senator Kalani Inka, joining us today.